Good afternoon. It's Friday, March 22. I'm Herman Green with the Midday News. A special welcome to those of you watching online at onespotmedia.com. Two persons have been arrested in connection with the murder of American businesswoman Nancy Hardy in Hanover, November last year. 33-year-old Kemar Grant of Westmoreland in, and Cedric Johnson, otherwise called Smurfs of Alexandria in St. Anne, were charged with murder and accessory to murder, respectively, in the case. Ms. Hardy's body was found in a shallow grave. The two accused are to appear in the Lucy Resident Magistrates Court on March 26. Both were charged following an intensive investigation by the police, which also resulted in the recovery of Hardy's CRV motor car, which went missing at the time of her death. One of St. James's most wanted men was killed by the police during an alleged gun battle in Granville Thursday morning. The deceased has been identified as 32-year-old Amoy Young, also called Pinky, of Gordon Crescent in Granville. TVJ News understands that around 9.30, the team went to Telament Drive in the community where Mr. Young was seen in the company of two men. It's alleged that the men opened gunfire at the police team after they were confronted. The men reportedly ran in different directions. During a search of the era, Mr. Young was found with bullet wounds. He was pronounced dead at hospital. One Browning 9mm pistol with two rounds of ammunition was allegedly sealed, seized from him. Head of the Era 1 Criminal Investigation Branch, Superintendent Michael Phipps, says Mr. Young, who was the leader of the MS-13 gang based in Granville, was among St. James's most wanted since May of 2018 following the murder of Ronald Samuels in Garden Crescent. The police say he was also wanted for shooting with intent, wounding with intent, and rape. Mr. Young was also wanted for illegal possession of firearm and ammunition. The gang he operated is a breakaway faction of the Big Yard Gang, also based in Granville. The police say both gangs are currently embroiled in a gang war, which has resulted in a number of murders and shootings. There are renewed calls for the high levels of crime taking place in central Clarendon to be addressed urgently. The Member of Parliament for the constituency is calling for the Ministry of National Security to assist with the police post in the constituency to fix the problem. He has also raised concern about squatting on lands, especially in areas deemed as crime hotspots. TVJ Shamela Pullen has a story. The most recent flare-up in central Clarendon was last week, when two persons were shot and killed and three houses set on fire. These incidents have driven fear in some residents. But since those incidents, Member of Parliament for Clarendon Central, Mike Henry, says he has sought help from the Minister of National Security, Dr. Horace Chang, to address. I have requested that there be more presence for the security forces in that area. I have requested a possible police force, if it's even temporary, and or more presence in the area. The minister has said he will be addressing those matters and getting back to me, and I have a faith that the minister will maintain the position. And um, we are then analyze and call on the community now, because if there are outside influences that are creating these issues, if it's issues that need to be addressed that I am not addressing, then let me know of them and we'll be able to look at it. But Mr. Henry is raising another issue, squatting. He says a number of persons in so-called volatile areas such as Effortville and its environs are occupying lands with no titles. If you lie down, leave land unused, then people will begin to utilize that land and that could lose many issues that is not right and sometimes create the kind of problem. So there's too much land occupied in and around the town that are not legalized by the people having their titles having their possession of land, which would give them the dignity of ownership and be able to make them perform. Mr. Henry is also calling on at least two government agencies to get involved in helping persons to get their titles to help lift the standard of living for the Clarendon residents. I'm calling on the National Housing Trust right, and the Housing Association of Jamaica, many of whom have started areas, not finished those areas, not completed the infrastructure, arguing over whether we should have sewage or don't have sewage, and begin to recognize that the people are entitled to those services, and we can begin to upgrade the land. If indeed we put a sewage plant in where it's needed now at Carlson Blades, 
then it will make this at least 5,000 housing lots available for people to build on. But they can't build on it if you don't have the proper sewage structure in place. Shamela Pullen, TVJ News. The repair works being done at the Cornwall Regional Hospital in St. James is expected to be completed in phases beginning in a matter of weeks. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton gave an update during a tour of the facility this week. He explained that the roof of the facility is being redone as leaking was a major contributor to the mold issues. He says the overhaul of the areas offering diagnostic services is also progressing well and is to be commissioned in a few weeks. Where we are now um, is an oncology suite that we're developing for cancer patients and this will be completed in another four or five weeks which will give us a better opportunity to provide for the treatment of, of those particular cases. In addition to that, um, the contractors for the Western Children's Hospital are mobilizing to set up their accommodations here on the compound. Uh, you would have heard that we had concluded um, with the Chinese government to begin construction of the 220 bed facility. The contractor was selected by the Chinese, they're here in the island, and we're making provisions for them to set up so that construction can begin within another month or two. Dr. Tufton says he does not anticipate any issues going forward as he believes the budget allocation to health is not perfect but workable. And with the work being done at the Cornwall Regional Hospital, the health sector will see major improvements. Overall, and so when we would have been completed, we will have a hospital in Western Jamaica that will give top-notch service, both from the personnel who are here, but also in terms of the building and the equipment to give support. The eastbound section of the Howard Cook Bridge in Montego Bay, St. James, will soon be closed for repair. Information received by TVJ News is that a section of the bridge has sunk. Community Relations Officer at the National Works Agency, Western Region, Janelle Ricketts, says a tender has been issued for a contractor to carry out work on the bridge. We are now in the pro process of selecting a contractor and finalizing those arrangements as well as a traffic management plan because this particular bridge is heavily used and we want to ensure that we are able to mitigate the congestion that the closure of this bridge will cause. She says a timeline for work to begin has not been given. However, she said the matter is considered urgent. And data from the court management services show that nearly 5,000 fathers on a yearly basis are taken to the family court for child maintenance. It has sparked questions as to why there is this high number. But social anthropologist Dr. Herbert Gale, speaking on TVJ's Smile Jamaica on Thursday, explained that many of these men have doubts about the paternity of the child. We're, we're certain that over 20% of men feel certain that they gave one of their neighbors a jacket and over 20 percent of men feel certain Them that they one. got Hold including on. some of them of those who have done dna or the the, the, the the mother of the child has informed them he noted that at least 10 percent of children in jamaica do not know their father but what's more worrying dr gale says is that approximately five percent of mothers don't know who the father is either It's a very complicated situation, but there are two things I think we have to be careful not to do. A, blame the mother and have a cultural blame on the mother. Correct. On this, because the, the point is, child shifting practices have to occur in spaces where <coughs> there is what is called urban polyandry, meaning that the woman actually requires two or three men in her life. These men are earning so little that she would need two or three men just to help take care of one child. <laughs> He says in order to reduce those problems, the society has to focus more on the poor and look at different ways of assisting them. Show us the legislation. That's the call from Alison Peart, chairman of the Taxation Committee at the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Jamaica. Now, she says the tax give back by government cannot be determined until accountants are able to read the fine print. Ms. Peart was speaking at Tuesday's post-budget forum hosted by Victoria Mutual Building Society. TVJ's Andrew Laidley reports. 
government announcing plans to cut taxes this year, but accountants are skeptical. Chairman of the Taxation Committee at the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Jamaica, Alison Peart, says there's usually a caveat. One of the issues we have as tax people, we get these budget announcements, and when you say the law, I tell you a different story. We need to see the law to be perfectly crystal clear because the devil is in the details. She argued that the benefit of the tax give back will be lost if the details of the law aren't fully understood. If we don't get the process of our legislation and the, the ability to move the information between the mortgage company, the stamp duty, and the lawyers quickly, no matter how much you reduce the tax, you're still going to be stuck there for six or seven months. So there's more work that needs to be done in this area to ensure that when you sign and you get your mortgage, you can move fast. Agreed? At the same time, Ms. Peart is calling for a complete revision of Jamaica's taxes. I would love to see the entire tax system reviewed. We have a habit of looking at pieces of it. I would love to see a comprehensive change. I would like to see more tax treaties, not for people to bring money in to take it out, but for us as Jamaicans to explore new territories. I would love for us to have treaties with other jurisdictions, with innovation, so that we can get our wonderful Jamaica with our wonderful minds moving things, exporting to get our economy going. And finally, we need to reduce the tax bureaucracy, whether it's our corporate law, whether it's our tax law, whether it's at customs. I know customs is going to be reforming, but nothing drives business underground. Nothing frustrates you that when you're trying to do proper work, proper business, and you are bureaucratically hand tied. While opening the 2019-2020 budget debate in Parliament, Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark announced that the government will forego $14 billion in taxes in the upcoming financial year. Andrew Laidley, TVJ News. We go now to news in sports. With just days to go before the start of the 2019 Issa Grace Kennedy Boys and Girls Championships, a Calabar High School teacher is asking that two of the team's top athletes be suspended from the event after accusing them of assault. In a letter to the media, the teacher is accusing the student athletes of leading a group of about 60 athletes to, among other things, injure the teacher, spilling blood, stomping on the teacher's cell phone, and damaging school property. The teacher, who says he has video evidence of the assault recorded on his cell phone, has also said that after 96 days, there has been no appropriate response from the school's administration. TVJ Sports understands, however, that disciplinary action has already been taken by the school against the students in question. The teacher is scheduled to have a press conference today where he says the video of the assault will be played. And that wraps up the Midday News. I'm Herman Green. Please join us at 7 for the Primetime News Package. On behalf of the news sports and production teams, good afternoon.